And now it's time for Conversations in Healthcare with Tesh Action Clinic. All right, good afternoon. I'm Mary Eugene Fogelkart, and this afternoon uh, I'll be signing two proclamations, one for a, a proclamation on American Heart Month and also one for Children's Dental Health Month. So uh, first I'll uh, start with uh, American Heart Month and I'll read the proclamation because of the importance of it. And then once I finish the two proclamations, I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Wilkes. Whereas heart disease is a leading cause of death in the United States, claiming the lives of more than 650,000 people each year. During American Heart Month, we, we raise awareness of the risk of heart disease, remember those we have lost, and highlighted, highlight the steps we can all take to save the lives of countless loved ones and address the unequal burden of heart disease in high-risk communities. Whereas, through research and innovation, we have made considerable progress in recent years to advance our knowledge and treatment of heart disease. New technologies allow us to diagnose, prevent, and treat heart disease more rapidly and effectively than ever before. We also have a better understanding of heart disease risk factors such as high blood pressure, bad cholesterol, smoking, being overweight or obese, and type 2 diabetes. Whereas, despite the significant progress we have made, heart disease continues to exact a heartbreaking toll, a burden dispro disproportionately carried by black and brown Americans, American Indians, and Alaska Natives, and people who live in rural communities. Cardiovascular diseases, including heart conditions and strokes, are a leading cause of pregnancy-related deaths, which are highest among women of color. Addressing these tragic disparities and improving heart health has never been more important as people suffering from heart disease and related conditions are also at an increased risk of severe illness and long-term long effects from COVID-19. Whereas engaging in regular physical activity, maintaining a healthy diet and weight, managing stress, avoiding smoke and vaping, and getting quality sleep each night can all reduce the risk of heart disease and help people live longer and healthier lives. While it is essential to see a healthcare professional if you have symptoms or risk factors related to heart disease, research shows taking a little time each day to promote a healthy lifestyle can improve your long-term health. Whereas on Friday, February 2nd, where National Wear Red Day, we honor those we have lost to heart disease and raise awareness of, act, of the actions we can all take to prevent it. I encourage all Americans to observe this important day. Continuing the fight against cardiovascular disease is crucial to improving our nation's public health. During American Heart Month, we must recommit ourselves to ensuring a healthier future for all Americans. Now, therefore, I, Eugene Folkar, Mayor of the City of Franklin, do hereby proclaim February 2024 as American Heart Month in the City of Franklin, in witness whereof on the fifth day of February. I'll proceed to uh, sign this proclamation for Heart Awareness Month. All right, Mr. Mayor, if you wouldn't mind indulging me, uh, yes. we have our dental, uh, the, uh, our staff dentist here. Yes. So I'm going to talk about uh, heart uh, awareness yes. and then we will change places and get up. Okay, all right. Okay. Although this is not the WWE, <laughs> that one. Thank, you, um, thank you so much for signing the proclamation as you have uh, always every year. And uh, hopefully one year we will come here and declare uh, that we won the, the victory on, right. uh, on heart disease. Unfortunately, it continues to be the number one leader of uh, causes of death, not only in uh, St. Mary Parish and Weekend, but in the nation. And you highlighted the things that we stress the most, and that is prevention, the things that people can do to help put themselves in a position to lower their risk. Um, 
one thing that is not mentioned uh, in there, but certainly if you have a family history of heart disease, that too can also play a role. But that old prayer surrounded is always true. Uh, control the things that you can control. And as you stated, uh, smoking is probably the number one uh, risk factor. Being a male over, uh, over 50, African American males, and, and African American women actually are at higher risk. Uh, controlling your blood pressure, maintaining a healthy diet, regular exercise, and controlling your diabetes, controlling your cholesterol, all those things can reduce the risk. February, as we all know, is also the time we celebrate Valentine's Day. So that was one of the reasons why I think uh, February was considered Heart Awareness Month. But I want to just remind all of you in the audience that uh, heart health is something that uh, should be on everyone's calendar, not only in February, but every day of the year. Um, those of us who are, are Catholic, you know, we're going to be going through the Lent season. Um, so take that opportunity. I know, uh, you know, a lot of folks make uh, New Year's resolutions and they call the third Friday Faith Friday because they've already, uh, uh, you know, filled in that. But if you uh, want to do something for Lent, I think it's a good time to do reflective. You get a second chance. Uh, to, to take and do something to, to help yourself and your family. Um, there's, there are things that, uh, again, can be treated. So I want to thank you again for always uh, you know, side, uh, signifying that. Uh, we do have resources in the community. I'll just make a shout out to uh, the work that we're doing at uh, Test Action Clinic. Uh, we are ready to serve you. The Body Event Hospital uh, also has cardiac rehab right now. So. Those who may have a problem, if they need cardiac rehabilitation, we have that service available locally also. You have a choice. You can have a choice on what you eat. Uh, you have a choice, and if you, uh, your provider says you can have an exercise regimen, you can do that. Certainly, primary prevention, never start smoking. If you do, we have lots of products that can help you quit. Um, cholesterol, we have medications, as, as well as diet. That, I always have to caution people because, you know, when people come in, patients will come in and will say, well, Doc, I don't understand why my cholesterol is still high. I took my pill. <laughs> but it doesn't give you a license to go eat a big seafood platter <laughs> or a big hunk of meat, you know. So diet has to be in hand in hand with uh, medication and exercise. But it can be beat, uh, and we can win this war. You know, this instrument around my neck, the stethoscope, we always listen to people's heart. When we do that, we're actually listening to make sure if they have any valvular heart problems is one of the big things we listen to, as well as to determine if they have an enlarged heart. But an EKG is the standard. Uh, anyone with hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, uh, to get a baseline EKG, the EKG can give us some information uh, in regards to the electrical activity in the heart and some of the things in there that we can tell if there might be a possibility of having ischemic heart disease, which is absorption of the blood flow. Uh, a stress test is one of the standard tests we do. We put someone on a treadmill, do a continuous EKG, you can tell if there are defects where you might not be perfusing. Uh, we have coronary artery uh, uh, scoring, calcium scoring, where you can have a, a, a CAT scan that picks up calcium deposits in the coronary arteries. Um, and, but then sometimes, uh, you know, people have asymptomatic disease. That's why we call hypertension the silent killer. And, there have been a lot of folks that thought they had bad indigestion and uh, they wound up you know, having a heart attack at home. So the classic, everyone remembers Fred Sanford from Sanford's son, when he would grab his chest and say, hold on, I'm coming to see Elizabeth. That is not the way uh, chest pain presents a lot of times. It can present you know, with jaw pain, it can present with indigestion, it can present with just nausea, not feeling well. The classic chest pain that's squeezing like an elephant sitting on your chest or you know going down your arm is not always the way it presents. So you have to have a high degree of suspicion. Any doubt that anyone may have, I think the best thing to do is to go ahead and get uh, get checked. You know, do not do not listen to your body. Your body will tell you uh, you know some of the symptoms that uh, you need to be aware of. At this time, I'll uh, I'll proceed to. Uh, read the proclamation on Children's Dental Health Month, and so happy that you're here, Dr. Williams. Uh, whereas the future to a large measure dependent on good health 
of our families, whereas good oral health habits start in childhood and we owe our children the opportunity to lead healthy and prosperous lives. Whereas good health can be achieved in part through good dental habits learned early and reinforced throughout life. Whereas a public educator about oral health is empowered to embrace healthy oral hygiene and dietary behaviors. Now, therefore, I, Eugene Folkard, Mayor of the City of Franklin, hereby proclaim the month of February as Children's Dental Health Month. And I urge all the citizens and community organizations to join in this observation. In witness whereof, I set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Franklin, of Franklin to be affixed on the fifth day of February, 2024. So at this time I'll proceed to sign the proclamation for Children's Dental Health Month and then I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Williams. Thank you so much. Thank you, yes, Mary. Thank, you. thank you for continuing the tradition of observing Children's Dental Health Month. It started in 1940 as a day. In 1981, it extended to an entire month. The 2024 theme for Children's Dental Health Month is healthy habits equal a healthy smile. Childhood tooth decay continues to be the most common chronic illness among our children. So if we practice healthy habits such as brushing our teeth twice a day with fluoride containing toothpaste, cleaning between our teeth with floss, staying away from sugar containing beverages and eating nice nutritious healthy fruits and vegetables, and of course coming to see your dentist at least twice a year. Because we all know that oral health continues to overall health. Overall health continues to make good health for our entire family. TESH has been like at the forefront of trying to address these needs with our school-based programs, our mobile dentistry, and of course our various sites throughout the state of Louisiana. So we're very thankful that you joined on the board and to address children's dental health. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we, we're blessed to continue this tradition of uh, signing these two proclamations every day, I mean every year. And I, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Wilkes and Dr. Williams and the staff of Tash Action Clinic, Clinic of doing the great things that you continue to do within our community. So thank you very much.